Hey, I'm Dr. Jason West, and welcome to the presentation on what is Lyme disease, the great imitator. Let me just walk you through what I've learned over the last 22 years of taking care of patients and this chronic, difficult, hard to treat, mismanaged, misdiagnosed uh, condition and the breakthroughs that we've been able to see with the hundreds of patient testimonials that we have. So with Lyme disease, you know, what is it? Well, this is the spirochete. This is the bacteria that, that causes so many different things from joint problems to nerve problems to, to autoimmune-like conditions. And it's just a nasty little guy. And so what we want to do in this presentation is walk you through, you know, who has it and, and give you some ideas of what to do about it. And so Lyme disease, it's one of the most controversial illnesses in the history of medicine. It's the fastest growing infectious disease, and it's quickly sweeping the country as more people are starting to understand it, understand the symptoms, the exposure, and the risk factors. It now infects more people than HIV and AIDS, and the diagnosed cases are increasing at a rate of 50% Per year and it's a devastating illness with consequences if you don't treat it early if you don't treat it right then it can just really have an impact not only on the patient but the patient's inner circle or support stroke structure so a reporter jerry leonard said according to the cdc this multi-system multi-stage illness is capable of inducing chronic disorders chronic inflammatory arthritis, musculoskeletal pain, and nerve disorders. And if you put 40 people in a room, what will happen is you'll see 40 different presentations. Some people have joint problems. Some people have heart problems, nerve problems, autoimmune-like problems, brain problems, cyclic mood disorders, hormone imbalances. There's just so many different things that this condition can or this disease can cause. According to Dr. Virginia Schler, we're dealing with a formidable, smart stealth type bacteria that's hard to eradicate and one that does extreme damage to the psyche and the soma if not treated aggressively over the long term and when missed the first following days of inoculation by the vector. So, you know, I really like this graphic. It, this bacterial kind of acts like a virus. It can act like a bacteria. It's just a really complex spirochete strand bacteria and, and it really affects so many different conditions of the human body. And so the number of Lyme disease cases in the United States has doubled in the last 30 years. It estimates there's 325 to 500,000 new cases every year and it's larger than AIDS, West Nile virus, and avian flu combined. And there's so much inaccurate testing and underreporting. Only a fracture of the cases are treated due to inaccurate testing and underreporting. Each year, hundreds of thousands of people go undiagnosed and told their symptoms are all in their head. And this is one of the most frustrating things that I see of someone that's treating Lyme disease in the trenches all of the time is... If it doesn't fit inside a clean diagnostic category, most of the medical treatments are, well, it's either you're a hypochondriac, you need to work, you need to get a job, you need to exercise, or here, you need to take this happy pill or antidepressant and you just need to move on with your life. And it's so frustrating and difficult for the patient and for the inner circle the support structure, the family, the friends, and the children of the patient that's suffering with Lyme disease. I love this California medical survey. Half of the Lyme disease patients reported seeing at least seven positions before their Lyme diagnosis was made. Nearly half of the Lyme disease for more than 10 years and traveled over 50 miles to obtain treatment. The latest news, you know, why haven't you heard about it? The media is silent because the doctors and insurance companies dismiss it as a hypochondriacal disease, and they've done it for years to sufferers of people that have fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, mixed connective tissue disorders. I think it can get into your nervous system, and you can be diagnosed 
with multiple sclerosis type symptoms or it can get into your joints and you can be diagnosed with polymyalgia rheumatica or ankylosing spondylitis where that bacteria is attacking your ligaments and then the lag- ligaments, the, the body's response is, is literally almost like a scar-like formation and it creates these really rigid ligaments or fibromyalgia or myologic encephalopathy. There's so many different conditions that can be caused and, and, and be diagnosed under an umbrella that are really caused by Lyme disease. And there's no cookbook medicine. It can be expensive to treat. Untold number of patients have it. There's no protocol that completely effective for all patients. And this is so hard. And, and, and I, this is where I see so many problems inside of the medical system because you do a Lyme protocol for patient A, and they may get a, a really good outcome. The patient B comes in, very similar symptoms to patient A, and you know what happens? You do the same protocol, and the patient doesn't respond. So you really have to be able to do different treatments. Sometimes it's energy balance. Sometimes it's immune system stimulation. Sometimes it's biochemistry. Sometimes it's biomechanics. And some excuse me, stomach absorption issues and food intake, all of these things have such an enormous impact on Lyme disease. And I think that's why so many healthcare providers get frustrated with the Lyme disease. Now, it's uh, so often that the patients automatically get treated with, sorry, with an antibiotic uh, approach. And if the root of all of it, confusion, ego, power between doctors, against other doctors, the insurance companies, the denied medical claims. I love this statement. Lyme disease is dramatically misdiagnosed, and there's too much denial by by doctors that chronic Lyme even exists. A researcher, Dr. Klaus Kurtenbach, said, we know that Lyme disease cases are continually rising in the United States, and the number of new cases in the United Kingdom appears to be increasing as well. And so this is what that bacteria looks like, this Borrelia burgdorferi, and it's this corkscrew-shaped bacteria. And one thing that most healthcare providers don't even know about is the ability for it to change phases. So I believe there's a spirochete phase, a dormant phase, an intracellular phase, a spore phase, and a biofilm phase. And the medical treatments for the PCR and the Western blot only are testing for one phase, so they're missing 60 to 80% of the infection markers because we're only testing for one particular phase. And I go into that in a lot more detail inside of our Lyme information course. So this condition, you know, is a cyclic disease that really attacks the wink link of the body. And I love this picture here of, of this person that has this unhappy pit a face and the reason why is because if you don't feel good it's really ha- hard to have healthy emotions if you're if you're un- having unhealthy emotions it's hard to feel good systemically and this is a really good depiction of what happens with people that have this chronic condition so the alterations or what happens with this disease is it gets in your system and it causes you know literally attack of the condition but it's also so hard on your brain, changes your chemistry, your function, your structural changes. And I really think that this is another great picture of the neuropsychiatric components of chronic Lyme disease and infections. And by the way, it's not just Lyme disease. It's Epstein-Barr, it can be MRSA, staph infection, herpes simplex 1, the canker sore virus, herpes simplex 2, the uh, genital version. It can be... um, Cytomegalia virus, parvovirus, these chronic healthcare conditions literally cause neurobehavior, neurodegenerative, psychiatric, autoimmune, and fatiguing illness. And what's frustrating is there's not a lot of medical approach to increase or improve the, the immune system. So there's antibiotics that are killing bugs, there can be some antivirals, and there can be some antifungals. But no one's really, really trying to boost the immune system. And in particular, what's really important with Lyme disease, and this is what you'll see in the patient testimonials, you have to be able to drain the jails of the body, which are the lymph nodes, 
which there's a really neat effective treatment that's inside the scientific literature of using potassium and hydrochloric acid to change the hydrogen ion content in those lymph nodes and to get them to get rid of the infection that, that if you don't do that, there's, there's, there's no place for the body to take the bacteria and properly process it. So that's one thing. There's no one that's really trying in the medical world except, you know, some, some centers of excellence that are really hard to find where you're reprogramming the nervous system because if you're sick long enough, your body thinks that being sick is normal. So that German treatment developing by Dr. Hunicke and Dr. Doge about neural therapy and how it reprograms the nervous system, no one's really going in and trying to help these chronic nerve memory problems. And so this is just, a, again, an accurate assessment of, of what's happening. ABC News talks about, you know, 20,000 Americans are infected and treated every year, but countless others go undiagnosed. And the Lyme disease may include headaches, major memory loss, um, rages, seizures, coma, as well as inflammation of the heart, bone lesions, and loss of vision. And the cause, again, is this bacteria that the body just doesn't recognize very well. And so the body thinks that, hey, this is normal. And then it, what happens is this vector that caused the disease is so often under overlooked. And, and, and we just don't, aren't treating it effectively. So with that in mind, I just wanted to give a real quick overview of what is Lyme disease we have a program, if you're interested about what Lyme disease, how we test for it, are you at risk for it, can you transmit it, why antibiotics, in my experience, is not the way to take care of Lyme disease. It's about immune system stimulation, and it's all about getting the body in balance. So if you go to drjasonwest.live, there is a course that we put together about Lyme disease there's a whole bunch of patient success stories of wheelchair to walking and not being able to get off the couch and Zach's story and Bree's story and Wes's story and Lily's story that, are, that we put together to help people have hope that you can beat your disease. So I've been taking care of Lyme disease for 22 years. I'm excited to be able to give this information for people. If you'd like additional information, there's a couple different places you can pick it up. We, we have an ebook available, a course available, and some recommendations where you're across the street or across the country. I'm Dr. Jason West, and this is all about Lyme Information Course. We'll see you guys on the next video.